In this video, we are going to look at binary search tree. <laughs> and we are going to uh, see what the definition of a binary search tree is and also the main operations that this data structure uh, uses. So the definition of a binary search tree uh, comes from this idea of having a binary tree that is sorted. So you start with this question that can we have a sorted uh, binary search tree, which at the beginning may seem uh, like a strange question because when we talk about sorted, uh, we can think, we, we automatically think of linear data structures ordered from the smallest to the largest value. Uh, and a binary tree uh, is not a linear structure. But the definition follows this intuition that at every node, including the root node, when you have some key stored in that node, all the keys in the left subtree of that node will be or must be less than the key at the root. And all the keys in the right subtree are going to be greater than. So if I draw the left subtree, the entire subtree with this triangle, everything here, all the keys stored in the left subtree are going to be less than x, and all the keys stored in the right subtree are going to be greater than x. Okay, and this is not true only for the root node. This should hold, this property should hold at every node. So for example, if you have another node here called y, all the keys on the left subtree of y are going to be less than y, and all the keys stored in the right subtree of y are, are going to be greater than y. And that is what's called the uh, binary search uh, tree uh, property or characteristic. So to write it down, a binary tree is called a binary search tree, a binary search tree, if the key is stored, the key stored at every node is greater than all the keys in um, that node's left subtree, right? So here you have x. x is greater than all the keys in the left subtree of that node and less than all the keys stored in the node's right subtree. Okay, and that's it. That's the definition. Again, let me emphasize on the fact that this property must hold for every node in the tree, not just the root node. For example, if you have a binary tree where at the root you have the value 15, and then the left child is, say, 10, and the right child is 21. Okay, so far everything is good, 15, 10 is less than 15, and 21 is greater than 15. And then for 10, again, the same property must hold everything on the left and everything, not just the child, but everything, right? So on the left, I must have something less than 10, so maybe 8. And on the right, I must have something greater than 10, but less than 15. So for example, if I put 17 here, then this is not a binary search tree because 17 is the left subtree of 15, but the key 17 is not less than 15. So 17 is not allowed, right? So uh, something that is greater than 10 because it's on, it's on the right side of n, 10, and less than 15 because it's on the left uh, subtree of 15, so maybe 14, right? And the same story goes here. Uh, 21 for the left and right, Left must be something less than 21, but greater than 15, because this node is in the right subtree of 15, so maybe 18. And then on the right side of 21, a value, a key that is greater than 21, and so on and so on. Okay, so that's that's what we call a binary search. Okay, now 
Um, usually in the textbooks and lectures and so on, we represent the tree this way, but in reality, this is not the only thing that is stored here, right? So we have the keys stored in this kind of ordered way. Uh, you know, the value on the top is greater than all the values on the left, less than all the values on the right, and so on and so forth. But there is also some data stored in the data structure. So it's not just the keys, but we usually in the picture, we, uh, um, we don't show the data. So the way that you should think about this is that uh, imagine that we need a data structure for storing uh, the information about students of school, okay? So these keys are going to be student IDs. And as a result, they're going to be unique. So we are not allowed to have the same key uh, repeated more than once, right? So every key is unique, right? Just like a student ID. And associated with every key, we can have extra data, which is the actual uh, information for each student, right? And this is a record that can contain the name of the student and you know the, the GPA and so on and so forth. But usually we don't draw the extra piece and we only focus on the keys. But the important thing to remember here is that this is not the only thing that we are storing. This is just the key or the identifier. And as a result, the identifiers or the keys uh, are unique. And that's why I said everything on the left is less than and everything on the right is greater than the key uh, at a node. And it didn't, I didn't talk about less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So equality between keys is not allowed. Okay? So, um, the next question that comes naturally is that, okay, we call this sorted, right? Uh, having this kind of uh, order between the keys is called sorted. That's good. Um, but why do we care? Why do we care about having these kind of binary trees? What is the advantage that we gain? And the advantage is something similar to what we had with binary search, if you remember from uh, one of our previous videos. If you have a sequence of values and you want to search for a specific value in that sequence, if they're not sorted, you can use linear search and it takes you linear time. But if that sequence happens to be sorted, then you start from the middle, either go to the left or right, divide and conquer, and you find it in order long n. So the same is true about this. If you are looking for a specific key in a binary search tree, what you could do is uh, you could start from, let's say the key that we are looking for is uh, we are looking for, uh, say, key 18. Okay. So we are looking for the record of a student where the student ID of that student is 18, okay? So here's what we do. We start from the root node. We compare the key that we're looking for with the key at the root node. And if it is less than, if the key that we're looking for is less than the key at the root, we go to the left subtree. If it's greater than, we go to the right subtree because of the way that binary search trees are defined. So in this case, 18 is greater than 15, so we go to the right subtree and start over which means we compare 18 with 21. If it is less than, we go to the left. If, it, if it's greater than, we go to the right. In this case, 18 is less than 21, so we go to the left subtree and start over. And again, compare 18 with the key at the current node, which is 18. They're equal, so we say, here we are. We found the student with uh, ID 18. And if we are interested in you know, the information about the student, we go to the record and, and we uh, investigate uh, the information about that student. Okay, so uh, as we will see later, this is going to be order uh, log n uh, if the tree is balanced. But I'm getting ahead of myself. That's for later. Okay, but this is the advantage of uh, having our binary trees sorted, or having a binary search tree instead of a binary tree where there is no specific order in the way that we store the keys in the nodes. Okay, so now that we know what a binary search tree is, uh, we should talk about the operations. Right? So what are the operations that this data structure implements? Okay, And the first one is what I kind of explained in this is a simple example, is an operation for finding a key. Okay, 
So let me start with a, with a new binary tree, binary search tree, and that is a little bit more interesting with more nodes. So here we are. And then for 917, I have 15 on the right, and 18 on the left of 19. And that's all for that branch. And here I have, say, 42. And then on the left side of 42, we have 35. And then here we have 51. And finally, is 40. Okay, so let's say this is my binary search tree, and you can verify that it is actually a search tree. So you have to go through every node, 29, Every key on the left side of 29 is less than 29, and every key on the right side is greater than 29. And then you have to do the same for every other node. For 17, everything on the left is less than 17, and everything on the right is greater than 17, and so on. And it's easy to verify that. Now, find, uh, as I said, starts from the root and compares the key that we are looking for with the key at the current node. If it is less than, it goes to the left subtree and repeat. If it's greater than, it goes to the right subtree and repeat. If it's equal, it says, I found it. And it's possible that it doesn't find it, but let's, let's uh, do this step by step, okay? So I'm going to explain one more time how find works through a couple of examples. So for the first example, let's say I call find on 40, okay? So what you do is you start from the root, as I said. So we have here. We compare 40 with 29, 40 is greater, so we go right. We compare 40 with 42. It's less than, so we go left. We, uh, we compare 40 with 35. 40 is greater than 35, so we go right. We compare 40 with 40. So uh, we either return true, in, meaning that 40 does exist in the tree, or if there is a record, uh, we look at the record with the information that we are looking for, uh, that is uh, that um, this key corresponds to. Okay, so very simple. And when I say repeat in each one of these cases, that can be implemented very simply using recursion. That was, that was an example of a positive case for find. Now let's do an example of trying to find something that doesn't exist in the tree, like 14, okay? Um, so 14, again, we start from the top. If we erase, so we start over. We start from the root node, always. So we're here. We compare 14 with 29. 14 is less than 29, so we go to the left subtree and make a recursive call, which starts again by comparing 14 with 17. 14 is less than 17, so we go to the left subtree and make a recursive call. The recursive call first compares 14 with 18. 14 is greater than 18, so we go to the right subtree and make a recursive call. And again, the recursive call starts by comparing 14 with 12. 14 is greater than 12. So it tries to go to the right subtree, but it realizes that this is a leaf and the right subtree is a null pointer. There is no right, right subtree. And that's another base case. So one base case, you remember here when you reach a node where the key matches with, uh, uh, match with the key that we were looking for, we stop the recursion and we uh, return true or we return the data that we're looking for. The other base case is when you go left, right, left, right until you hit the null pointer. In that case, it means that the key that you're looking for does not exist in the tree. And in that case, you either return false, depending on how you define the function, or, or throw an exception. Okay? So very simple. The next operation uh, on binary search trees, which is uh, also interesting, is adding. So let's say instead of looking for the student in the class or in the school, we are adding a new student to the data structure, okay? So this new student has a key that is different from all the existing keys, and we want to insert a new node into our data structure that contains this key and potentially contains the information about that student, okay? So let's again uh, do this through an example. So let's say the new student that I'm adding to the database, to the data structure, is uh, has ID 60. So the first part of insert is similar to find, okay? Which means we start from the root node, compare, go left and right until, 
you know, let me tell you until when uh, in and when. Okay, so let's do this actually step by step. So we start from the root node. The key that we are looking for is 60. So you compare 60 with 29, 60 is greater, you go right. Make a recursive call, 60 is greater than 42, you go right again. And then 60 uh, compared with 51, 60 is greater than 51. So you try to go right again, but there is no right. And that's you know, uh, the null pointer. And that's what we hope for. If you're trying to insert 60, we don't want to find 60 in the tree uh, already. Right? So you hit the null pointer, and that is where you're supposed to insert the new node. So what you do is you create a new node in C++. You can do that with the new operator to allocate the memory and so on. And then you put 60 in that node with the other information about the student that you, wanna, you may want to do. And then this null pointer, or this pointer, the right pointer for this node that used to be null, you change that so that it points to this new node, and that's it. Okay. Now, when we implement this, you will see that we literally call the find method because the first part of the uh, this procedure was going left, right, left, right is exactly what we didn't find. And then find tells us this is the null pointer, and this is where this new node is supposed to be inserted, and then. The rest is just creating the node and changing one pointer and you're done. Okay? Now, one thing that is very important when working with binary search trees is that find doesn't change the structure of the binary search tree. It just looks for a value, either finds it or not, but it doesn't change it. Insert and remove, for that matter, they change the structure of the binary search tree. And when you change the structure of the binary search tree with an operator, you must be 100% uh, sure that that operator preserves the, uh, the binary search uh, property, the binary search tree property, which means at every node, the keys on the left are less than that, uh, the key at that node, and the keys on the right are greater than. And you can verify that in this case, we uh, preserve the binary search tree property after inserting six. Okay, so the next operation that, or actually the last operation, is removing a node from the tree. So a student graduated or, or something, leaving the school, and we want to remove uh, the student from the data structure, and we want to know how to do that. And it turns out that this operation is more complex than the other two, and uh, it requires considering three different cases. Uh, but before going through that, I need to make one definition that will be used in the implementation of remote. And that is the definition of what's called uh, the in-order predecessor of a node. So, in order predecessor. Or IOP of a node. Okay? And the definition is very simple. The definition says the in order predecessor or IOP of a node is a node that occurs exactly before that node in the in order traverse in order traverse okay now remember in order traversal you first visit all the nodes in the left subtree then the current node then all the nodes in the right subtree if you don't remember that uh, look at the previous video that we had about uh, three traversal algorithms. Um, and here it says, okay, uh, the predecessor or in order predecessor of a node is a node that occurs exactly before the, the node. Okay, so if you do this in order traversal, there will be a linear uh, ordering of the node, and the in order predecessor is exactly the previous node in that order. Okay. Um, so, if you want to go through this example again, 
which, which is my running example for uh, this video. And if we do the in order, let's say you want to find out the IOP, what is the in order predecessor of 17? Okay, this node over here. So what we need to do is we need to do the in order traversal of this node, uh, this binary search tree. So we start from the root, left, 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 so five, and then eight, and then 12, and then 17, 18, and 19. And then 29, 35, 40, 42, 51, and finally 60. Okay, so this is the in order uh, traversal of this binary search tree. Now, the first thing that you notice here is that what we got from the keys is that they are sorted now from the smallest to the largest. And this is not a coincidence, that's a fact that's always true which is if you do in order traversal of a binary search tree, because of the way that the binary search tree is defined, uh, what you get is uh, from the smallest key to the largest key. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, we, speaking of the in order predecessor of 17, it's the node that occurs exactly before 17 in the in order traversal. So 12 is the in order predecessor of 17, or 29 is the in order predecessor of 35, and so on. Okay, so that's the definition. And as I said, uh, a side note here is that if you have a binary search tree and you do in order traversal, they will it will output the uh, nodes from the smallest key to the largest key in a sorted order. Okay, so that's the definition. Now, if um, it turns out that when removing uh, a key uh, from a binary search tree, this is a useful definition. But what we don't like about this is that it's time consuming doing the, the traversal of the entire tree. So the next thing that I want to tell you is how we can find the in order predecessor of a node without doing the complete traversal. Okay. So the first note that I want to make is what I just said uh, for. So the first node is that note that uh, the in order traversal of a binary search tree outputs the keys from the smallest from the smallest. To largest, right? So they are sorted, and that's always true. Okay. The other thing is to find the IOP, the in order predecessor of a node. Instead of doing the in order traversal and find the previous node in that uh, traversal, what we can do is we can go to the left subtree in two steps. So step one, we go to the left subtree of the node. And then in that subtree, find the rightmost node. Rightmost node in that subtree, which is faster than doing the traversal of the entire tree. Okay? Now, here, if you want to do the same thing, which is finding the in order predecessor of 17, here's 17. So first we go to its left subtree. So this is the left subtree of 17. And in that subtree, we go to the rightmost node. Now, in the previous videos, we talked about leftmost node and how to find it. Similar idea. So starting from here, you go right, 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 right until there is no right child. So from 18, you go to 12, and then from 12, you try to go right, but there is no right, so 12 is the rightmost node. In the left subtree of 17, so we say 12 is the pre, in order predecessor of 17, which is which agrees with what we found in the um, using the previous definition, okay? So this is the definition, and this is a simpler way of finding the IOP of a node. Okay, 
Now that we have all of this, we are ready to talk about remove. And in one case, remember for remove, I told you that there will be three cases. In one case, we need to, we, we will uh, need to use the IOP. Okay, so back to operations. The first one was find, the second one was um, insert, the third one, remove. Removing a key, okay? So as I said, we consider three cases. Case one, the node to be removed. is a leaf has no children. So this is kind of the simplest case possible for you. So again, let's go back to our example up here. And let's say I want to remove 60. Okay, because why not? We just insert the 60. Let's, let's say I want to remove. So here's what you do. You first call find. To find the node with the key 60. Okay, we can clean up here a little bit. So, what we are doing here is that we have a call to remove and the key is 60. All right, bear with me. So, remove 60. Okay, um, so what we do is we start from the root node, just you know, just like. Uh, what we did for find and insert. So we are here, 60 is greater than 39, go right, greater than 42, go right, greater than 51, go right again. So here it is. So we find first the node to be removed. And in the implementation, we'll see that we, we literally call the find function. Uh, so here it is. Now what we need to do is two things, two simple things. We need to deallocate the memory that was allocated to this node using the delete operator in C++. Second, since 51 doesn't have a right child anymore, it set its right pointer not to this to this one. Okay? And that's it. That's how you remove a leaf from it. So that was the first case. The second case, which is almost as simple, is when your node that you're removing, the case B, the node to be removed. as one child. Okay, so let's say I want to remove from this tree again, I want to remove 35. So what happens if I try to remove 35? Okay, we start from the top. We go left, right, left, right, until we find the node that you want to remove. So from the top, 35 is greater than 29, so we go right. Less than 42, so we go left. And here it is, we found it. This is the node to be removed. Okay? Now, the problem is I can delete this node. That's fine. But then this node has a child, which is this node with 40. And I'm removing 35, so 40 doesn't have a parent. So the question is, who will be the parent of 40? And the answer is the parent of 35, or uh, in other words, the grandparent of 40, which is 42, becomes its parent. So what we do after finding the node that we are removing and realizing that it has one child, we deallocate the memory that was allocated to that node, and then change the pointer from the parent to the node that we just removed, we change that pointer so that it points to the only child that that node has or has, right? So basically the picture becomes like this. And you see that still this is a binary search. You remember when you change with these operations, you change the structure of the binary, a binary search tree, we must be sure that it, the tree remains a binary search tree still. Okay, so there you go, that's the second case. Finally, the last case, the most difficult case, which, you know, we are going to use this in order predecessor, case C. 
is when the node that you are removing has two children. The node to be removed has two children. Now here we need to work a little bit harder uh, to, to remove the node and uh, preserve the binary search tree problem. Okay, so let's say I want to remove uh, 29, the root node, because why not, right? So there is a call to remove 29. So first you do left, right, left, right, until you find the node to be removed. In this case, there is no left, right, left, right. You compare and immediately find it. It could be that I want to remove 17 or 8. And in that case, you have to do one left or two left and so on. But in any case, we are at the node that we want to remove. And we realize that it's left and right pointers. Both of them are none. I mean, neither of them is known, which means that it has two children. Okay. Now I can deallocate this, but it has two children. So the question is, who would replace 29? And the answer to who, so the main question here is, who should replace 29? And the answer is the in-order predecessor of 29. Okay, so how do we find the in-order predecessor? If you remember, we go to the left subtree, and then in the left subtree, we find the rightmost node. So from 17 in the left sub and subtree, we try to go right, and then from there, we go right again and right again until there is no right child. So from 17, I go to this right child, which is 19, from 19, I try to go to this right child, but there is no right child. So 19 is the IOP of 29, which makes sense because 19 is the largest key in the tree that is less than 29. Let me say that one more time. The largest key that is less than 29. So among all the keys that are less than 29, 19 is the largest. And that's a reasonable candidate for replacing 29. The alternative would have been the smallest key that is greater than 29, so the right subtree finding the smallest value. And that also would work, but we went with this option. Okay, so, so what do we do now? What we do is uh, the following. First, we do a swap, right? So step one, we swap. So, uh, 29 with its uh, in order predecessor. That's easy enough. So 29 goes here and 19 goes here. Okay. And then we delete the node that we are trying to delete at its new position. Now, what is the benefit of doing the swap? When we do the swap, remember this was the rightmost node in the left subtree. The rightmost node means it definitely doesn't have a right child. It may or may not have a left child. In this case, it does, but it could be that it didn't have a left child either. So in any case, it either has one child, only a left child, or no children, which means that deleting 29 and its current position will be either case A or B, which we just covered, and it's very simple. So we first find the in-order predecessor, then we swap the node to be removed with its in order predecessor, and then delete the node at its new position. And we know that this new position is not going to have two children, either no child or one child. And in this case, that one child, remember for one child, we delete and then connect the child to the grandparent. Okay, so there you have it. That's the uh, third case for remove. Right, we will see implementations of these. And uh, that will be also very interesting, but the main ideas are all present here uh, conceptually. Now, let me finish by talking about one more operation, which is very simple. Uh, whenever we have a data structure, it's useful to have an operation that uh, says whether or not the data structure is empty. So we have empty that returns true if the binary search tree is empty and false otherwise. And it's very simple. It's just checking to see whether the root node is null. So if the root node is null, it means that the binary search tree is empty, or data structure is empty, otherwise it's not empty, and that's all. Now, as I said, in the next video, we will look at <clears throat>
implementation of uh, uh, binary search tree in C plus.